Hey, this is Derek Murphy from creativeindia.com. I'm going to show you a little bit about um, something I'm doing in a cover I'm working on. I think it's kind of important to share because it's it's the process of how I make covers. Um, because some people have been asking me recently, or they, they ask for feedback on Facebook or something, and they say, like, you know, what do you, what do you think of my cover? And I say things like, um, it's not blended well together, or the, the colors need more um, something. Anyway, I'm just going to show you a few variations of kind of my process so you can see how things work out. So this was something that I had been working on for a while. This was just one of the rough draft samples. Um, it's kind of a fantasy. There's this angel guy flying in the background because it's kind of like the, the trick is with a fantasy this is a kind of a sort of psychological thriller supernatural elements um, and they're ruled by these winged angel people so it's hard to convey all that on the cover so like what would be what most cover designers would do um, would be maybe to show something kind of like this so you have the scene and you have an angel or whatever but this isn't a very good cover so then once he knew kind of what he was looking for I started cleaning it up a bit this still isn't that great um, I added a little bit of decoration I changed the co colors a little bit I still have the angel guy it's getting better um, it's nice that we added these two girls here because it's actually, I mean, with the title especially, it's the princess and the prime minister's, da minister's daughter, so there's two main characters. Um, and this is getting okay. So this is the one that the author said <clears throat> is, you know, it, at least he's interested. It's getting better. This is usually also what I do is I'll start off making a lot of very rough samples. So some people get nervous. Um, oops, I go back. Like, they'll get nervous when I'm starting out because my first draft will be really rough and kind of ugly. So people, like, I'll send samples like this and people will be like, oh no, this this is terrible. It's not what I want. So, um, but that's, like, some authors, some designers will just make it perfect the first time and they'll just make one copy. I make lots of variations uh, to kind of figure out what, what they're looking for. Um, so I tried some different things. Anyway. So then we had to we had it to about like this, and that's okay. Like this is not such a terrible cover, um, but the difference between this cover as it is um, and this more final cover it's a really huge difference, and it's also some of the more professional design things um, that are worth paying attention to. So like when most beginner designers, or maybe if you're doing it yourself, you're trying to make your own cover, um, you might end up with something kind of like this. And there are a lot of problems with this cover. So for example, like the, the decoration is okay, but it's not very clear. Um, this angel guy looks really weird. This is something that's like, it's technically correct. It's, it's informing the readers that, um, that it's an angel something, that there's a flying angel guy, but it's just, it's trying too hard to communicate the details and the details don't matter as much as the mood and the like how beautiful it is or how it makes you feel um, and this is kind of also giving too much away so when I see covers like this people ask you know what should I do with it one of the main things is just um, if you just put a bunch of pictures and Photoshop them together it's just not gonna look natural it's not gonna look very good so you need to add some layers where you blend everything together and you change the colors so it looks like it's more part of one scene um, so I change the colors a little bit in this but then also, I changed the sky, so I changed the lighting a lot. So with the sky, the light comes down, it covers part of the city, and the light kind of goes um, over here. A lot of especially urban fantasy covers do a lot of fancy things with light and color. Um, I like, my covers are a little more subtle, so they don't really, they're not as glowy or, or shiny or colorful, but I really like very pretty, very subtle, understated um, Covered. So one of the nice things about like besides just having the the colors fixed, which is basically all I did, I cleaned it up and I changed the colors um, and the lighting. So just adding the lighting and the colors really makes this scene look more realistic and just also you really need a lot of contrast. So it's either color contrast or it's light and dark contrast. And the problem with color contrast is if you just throw in all the pictures and you leave the regular colors, then you get a bunch of natural colors that don't really fit well together. Um, with contrasting colors you want two or three main colors 
that work well together. So you need to control which colors are actually showing out. So I've said this before, but the, the best contrast for colors is always teal and yellow. Um, so even though I didn't use a lot of teal and yellow, this the yellow text and the, the light blue background, um, it, it works better because it's only two main colors rather than just a bunch of stuff mixed together. For the decoration I, I chose, I played around with some different de decorations. I ended up just choosing something uh, way down here. I wish I could get rid of this. I'm not really sure how. Anyway, so I had a little bit of decoration um, around the author name and I made the author name smaller. And then I mostly just picked a really nice clean text, especially for fantasy covers. A nice, um, nice clean serif font with a lot of spacing is usually the way to go for fantasy. Um, so this is like, and also I, I got rid of the angel because he was kind of too much and I added some some birds which could actually be angels or something. So it's, it's hinting at the thing that's there but um, not making it over the top or too obvious. Usually when you try to do stuff like this, supernatural elements, it just doesn't look as good. So this is kind of what I have that I'm working on. However, let me show you how I did that in Photoshop. Um, so this is kind of what what it looks like. And if I go through here, what you'll actually see is a lot of layers. So I talk about like color overlays. So these are just colors that actually looks really good um, like that. Like you want to play around a lot with the colors to see what works well. And then I have the different color fill and I'll just use color burn with a different opacity or um, this one's just a color with like a very light opacity. So there's barely anything here, but it still makes a difference by having a little bit more of a color. And then these are just some lighting effects. Um, let me show you. This is the normal version. Looks kind of like that. So it's just like a texture or a lighting effect. Um, and I'm just blending it. You just want to add like a lot of layers basically and then change the opacity level until you get it to look cool. And you really just have to throw a bunch of stuff in there and play around um, until all the lighting and everything just looks good together. You might have to experiment with a lot of different kinds of layers until you find the stuff that works. I also had a little bit of just a vignette in here. Um, I didn't do very much. It just makes the center a little bit lighter to bring out those light, those lights. I could also add in more text effects. I had to choose like do I want it yellow or blue. Um, I could be adding more lighting behind it to make it kind of glow a little bit. Oops. So I could do something, let's see. I could do something kind of like that that makes it more glowy. Um, and that's all right. I decided not to do it that way because I like it just cleaner. But then the other thing you can do once you actually have, you know, your art, um, you can use Photoshop actions. So for example, I don't have, whoops, I don't have tons of actions, but um, there's a lot of actions you can get for, what do they call it? Um, post work, retouching or whatever. So there's all these different options I can use. So for example, one of the ones that I, I tried this just a minute ago and I used experimental magic, um, which gave me something like, where'd it go? Gave me something like this. This was actually how it looked. So it's too dark, but I can just put it on top of all of my art and change the opacity. And all it does is just kind of make it a little bit darker. Um, it's really good for kind of blending everything in together if you just use one action on everything. So then I can actually flatten this again and then try something else. So maybe I'll try this. Let's see, ghost glow or colorful glow is a pretty good one for anything that has a lot of glow in it. Um, and all it does is a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of small actions together. So then I could just copy this, go back to my history and go back before I flatten the image. Because I want to make sure I don't lose all of my layers. Um, and then I can just paste a new one of these. So this just has a little bit more glow. It makes it a little bit darker, um, a little bit more magical, probably for like a psychological thriller, which this one is, it's probably better 
to have something like this. So um, this was, like I showed you, this is the basically the final cover. This is already a cover that looks pretty good, but um, once I add in a few of these layers of actions, you get a lot more contrast, you get a lot more of kind of like a glowy feeling, um, and that just makes everything look a lot more professional and sharper. Just kind of it makes it look more like it's one piece of art, which is the thing. You don't want to just have art and then text, like text slapped on front of it. You want it to all to look really good together. Um, so that the, the way you usually do that is to flatten everything and then use some some actions to change everything um, together to make it like one piece of art. So this is probably like what the final will look like because this looks pretty good. Anyway, uh, maybe this helps a little bit. I, I try to give, I tell people like on Facebook to do this kind of stuff, but it, they don't really understand what I mean. Um, and there's also, this is kind of the really big difference between, I'm not saying I'm the best designer in the world, but the, des the quality of the book cover design um, is going to depend on a lot of things like this. These, these are like, after you have the basic layout and the text, even if it looks okay and it's not so bad, um, how do you actually make it look pretty awesome or just even a lot better? This is kind of like the post, post, post stuff, post, post work, post design, I guess. Um, so you can see like the difference between this rough mock-up where I haven't done any of this and then the final stuff. There's just the problem with this kind of cover is um, even if it's like everything is there, it just doesn't have any emotion. And you really need your fiction cover to communicate emotion. Um, so with the colors and with the glow, this one does a much better job of making you feel something and also communicating the genre. And this, like if you're not adding the colors or the glow or the lighting, um, if you're not doing that stuff with your coverage, your coverage is going to be like it's not going to do, it's not going to make people feel anything. They'll look at it and they'll notice, you know, it's a girl in a dress and it's kind of a fantasy thing, but they won't, it won't make them feel anything. And you really need to get them um, to feel that emotion for fiction because that's part of the branding. That's part of the genre. If the, people read particular genres to feel a certain emotion. So if your cover can't promise the emotion of that genre that they're, they're looking for, they're not going to know um, that it's for them. They're not going to want to read it. So even though like even though it seems like this is extra stuff like this isn't exactly book design this is just all i did was change the colors and the lighting and the glow and fix it up a bit um but doing that and also being really good with like knowing how to lay out text because the other thing that most indie authors or unprofessional designers screw up is that they'll even if they're really good at the art um because there's a lot of people now who are great artists and they can make really professional art but they're not so good at the text so they'll they'll make a really nice cover and they'll screw it up by not using text that fits the genre or that just doesn't really fit the art um that's something that unprofessional designers or diy like authors will screw up and that's so important because if you even if i had this really good art if i didn't have the right text or if i didn't have professional text on it it would it'd be kind of a giveaway it'd be just like it'd make it obvious that it wasn't professionally designed um Anyway, I hope this video helps a little bit. I might uh, put it up on my main cover site to give you a better idea of um, my design process in case you want to hire me for something. I'm not taking on a lot of clients for cover design anymore, but I'm, I still take on some. Anyway, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.